This is how we do the focus due now on net force. So net force is a really important equation, especially for unit three. Um, so if we look at the reference table over here, um, they've written it with acceleration equals F net divided by M. So this is also called Newton's second law. Um, I don't expect you to know which law it is, but I do expect you to know how to use this equation. So we see that um, mass and acceleration have an inverse relationship, um, but if we have more net force, we're going to have a bigger acceleration. So those are just some trends of this equation that you should know when you see this. Um, but to go to the do now, this is what it says. Um, find the net force on the block if the acceleration is 0 0.17 meters per second squared and the mass is 18 kilograms. All right, so that's what we are given. So we want net force, and I know some of you like to use the triangle um, visualization of the equation. So if we were to use the triangle, remember you always put what's in the numerator of the equation at the top, and then we have A and M. So if I were to cover up the M, for instance, I would see that if I want to solve for mass, it'd be F net divided by A. If I wanted to solve for A, it'd be F net divided by M. And if I wanted to solve for F net, it would be acceleration times mass, which is what we want to solve for. Um, so I'm just going to rewrite the equation, M times A, mass times acceleration. We know that my mass is 18 kilograms. We know the acceleration is 0 0.17 meters per second squared. And that is going to equal, if I round up, 3 newtons. And newtons, you should also know, is the same thing as kilograms times meters per second squared. Um, both are acceptable. I will accept both, but I write newtons because it's shorter and easier. So that's how we do that. And you should also be aware that for this do now, it changes. Sometimes I ask you to find net force. Sometimes I ask you to find mass. Sometimes I ask you to find acceleration, depending on what's given. So you need to know how to use this, this equation for all three of those possibilities. All right, so the second one says find the force of friction. And this isn't particularly hard, but it does throw students for a loop because you have to think about the system. So we have an applied force of 12 newtons. We don't know what the friction is, but we know that the F net, because we just solved for it, is three newtons. So you need to think of it like this. Okay, if I have 12 newtons pulling to the right, how many newtons have to pull to the left to get a net force of three? Um, so we could write this as an equation if you want, like F net is going to equal force applied minus force of friction. We know F net is three newtons. We know force applied is 12 newtons. So what does force of friction have to be um, to make this true? Well, if that means force of friction has to be nine newtons because they're gonna cancel out. These are vector quantities. Um, Later, like next week or so, you're going to learn the force of friction equation, and you're probably going to forget that you can use this trick to solve for force of friction. It happens often. Um, we're going to learn that force of friction also depends on the materials. Sometimes you're going to be given a problem where there's no materials given, like this one here. And if that's the case, you can still solve for force of friction, but you just have to think of it in terms of the vectors. Draw the vector diagram, figure out what the net force is, and then solve for what you don't know. So don't forget that, because um, I often find on tests, students will come to me and say, I can't find the force of friction. I don't know if it's uh, you know, copper on steel or whatever. And I say, you don't need to know that to solve for it. And they forget that they can do it this way. So just a reminder, keep that in mind. And that's how we do this one.